Welcome back to Get Well Acadiana with Dr. Kevin. Thank you so much for joining me on this fine Saturday morning. So grateful all of you decided to tune in on the show today. I want this to be the show that changes people's lives for the better. And that's the reason I come do this show every Saturday morning here with you. And for those of you just tuning in for the first time, my name is Dr. Kevin. Welcome to the show. We talk about some of the latest advances in drug-free solutions to today's worst health problems every week right here on the show using natural health care and functional medicine techniques. And you know, I've consulted over 10,000 patients in the last 20 years, and I have been able to develop some patterns of what I see as to why people have lost their health. So that's what this show is about. My experience in seeing thousands and thousands of patients that have lost their health and what are the commonalities of why that has happened to them. And you know, I have a motto that's on my desk right next to my computer that I practice every single day uh, in, in my day-to-day practice. And, it, and, it is, and it's my motto. It says, to listen with concern and treat with compassion. And that's something that I think we could use a lot more of in the healthcare industry, listening to our patients with concern and treating them, them with compassion. And so I try to practice that every single day. You know, it's it's funny, Brandon. Uh, oh, I'm here with my co-host, Brandon Como. Hey, hey Don. So, you know, Brandon, it was funny. I, I have patients drive from all over the state to come see us here in Lafayette. And they, the, the other day I had a patient that said, you, you know, Doc, I had to drive all the way from Pinhook to get here. And, you know, we kind of all chuckled because I said, uh, well, the lady next to you actually drove from Homa. Oh, wow. And so, yeah. you know, it, it's really just priorities. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, wh- you have to be willing to do something in order to get a different result. You know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting something different to happen. And, and you have to be willing to put a little bit of time in in order to change your health. You know, I, I was kind of laughing on the way over here this morning. I was, I was kind of thinking how to you know, how to, how to talk about this. And, you know, there's no waiter for your health. You know, there's no drive through, you know, you have to be willing to do something different and, and, and to take action and put a little bit of time in uh, so that you don't suffer later on in, in your life. And, and, and the only solution for you living a long, healthy, functional life is prevention and wellness. That's also the solution to this healthcare disaster that we have in America is just prevention and and wellness, and nobody's talking about that. So that's what this show is about, and I appreciate all of you tuning in. And on today's show, we're going to discuss something that we are seeing more and more of in day-to-day practice, and that is thyroid disorders. And we're going to go into all of the fatigue and weight gain and low energy that comes with that. I see patients every day that don't even know they have thyroid problems. And we find undetected thyroid problems on almost almost daily in practice. So if you have thyroid problems, stay tuned. And, you know, also if you know someone in your family or a friend of yours that has thyroid problems, text them and tell them to tune into the show. Uh, we're going to break all of this down on the show today on w- what thyroid problems are and, and, and how they occur. And here's the other thing to consider. You may have been told your thyroid was fine. So maybe you went to your doctor and, and, you know, said, I just don't feel myself or I'm tired. And they checked your thyroid and said, well, that's not it. You're going to find out today that might not actually be the case. We have some exciting new details to share with you on what that can mean and how to know if you actually do have your thyroid uh, as a problem causing you, you to feel better. So here's the thing, guys. There's literally thousands of you out there that have been to your doctor, your doctor told you your thyroid wasn't working, put you on medication, and that was the end of the story. Just kind of take this the rest of your life, and that's really all the investigation we're going to do. There's so much more to it than that. But patients have that kind of idea. Well, yeah, my thyroid quit working. Well, yeah, my mom's did too, and I'm going to take this Synthroid, and everything's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm good for the rest of my life. That may not necessarily be the case. We have to find out why your thyroid quit working because it very well may be affecting other parts of your body 
as well. Guys, I recently had a lady come into my office, very nice lady, and she uh, she came in for fatigue and was having difficulty losing weight. And she had been to her doctor and they checked her thyroid and her TSH was high, meaning that her thyroid wasn't working. And she was given a prescription of Synthroid and that was it. You know, she thought the case was closed, that she had sort of been fixed for that. So th- she thought she had just a simple thyroid problem and like most thought that it had been fixed by her medication, but she still didn't feel great. And so I was asking her some more questions about it. You know, did they try to find out why your thyroid wasn't working? Well, no, they didn't. Did they do any further testing to see if maybe it was autoimmune thyroid problems? No, they didn't. Did they check it you for thyroid cancer? Nope, sure didn't. They, they just said it's not working and gave me this medicine. So we decided to test her appropriately, and we found out that actually she has double Hashimoto's autoimmune thyroid disease. And that means that her thyroid was being killed by her immune system. And worse than that, it was attacking it in both different ways that it can, and, and, and not just one way, making it, you know, double Hashimoto's disease. Now, this is crucial information for this lady's future because, first of all, that's not even a thyroid problem. That's an immune system problem. Her immune system is attacking her thyroid, so she's autoimmune. And worse than that, the second way that the immune system can attack the thyroid can lead to thyroid cancer if it's not corrected. And that's according to a study published in the Endocrinology Journal in 2014. So, you know, it's not just something that I think. That's 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 research. That's literature to prove that. And so that's something that this lady absolutely needed to know. This particular type of thyroid disease leads to thyroid cancer if left on its own devices. So, you know, this patient was in serious trouble and had no idea. And that's just a shame that that's, you know, all that all that happened, you know, that all that went for her for her future or for her health. And and so we we now were able to discover some of the underlying things that were going to really, you know, really change her future. We need to find out what the underlying reasons are that the thyroid has stopped working because whatever has caused it has never been fixed or addressed. And that's not okay. Guys, your thyroid doesn't just go on vacation and quit working for no reason. You know, your organs don't just go on strike one day and decide they're going to quit for no reason. If you have something so significant in your body that an organ has stopped working, wouldn't you want to know where that's coming from? You have an organ that has shut down. I mean, my goodness, if that was your heart or your liver, w- wouldn't you be concerned? And, you know, your thyroid is critical to every single function in your body. Every cell in your body has thyroid receptors on it. And so if that's not a wake-up call, I really don't know what would be. But it's so common that patients don't even see that as a big deal. So if I were a mechanic and I came to you and I said, ma'am, we found the problem with your car. Your car has just quit working. It's normal. Cars do that sometimes. They just quit for no reason. You would think I was crazy and find a new mechanic. When an organ has shut down, that should concern you enough to dig a little bit deeper into the underlying (laughs) reasons of why. So we're going to get into all of these details on thyroid problems today and why that happens. And, you know, like I said, you know, if you're listening to the show and you know someone with thyroid problems, shoot them a text and tell them to tune into the show. And uh, also, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm going to be hosting a workshop that's open to the public. And I wanted to invite all of you to it. It's called Four Secrets to a Healthy Thyroid. It's going to be on July the 2nd at 6.30 p.m. And you can register by calling my office at 837-7174 837-7174 for the location and, and, and more information. And if you have thyroid problems of any kind, you need to come find out, you know, how some of these underlying reasons and, and kind of how it works inside your body. And, and it's very important that we address the thyroid completely because other things could be taking place in your body that you want to know about. Just like this lady that I was telling you about that has double Hashimoto's autoimmune disease and had no idea. Um, I had one just yesterday who came in for something completely 
other than any kind of energy problem or any kind of fatigue problem, had no idea they had thyroid problems, and we found out they're also autoimmune thyroid. So this is something that you really want to get, you know, to follow up on it and, and to get it looked at. Now, here's the other thing to consider. You may have actually been told your thyroid was okay and that that's not what's causing you to feel bad. But many times we find out that, that, that it actually was the problem all along because patients may have something called subclinical thyroid disorder. What that means is that it doesn't fall outside of these huge, ridiculous, normal ranges that they use to st on lab work. But that doesn't mean that you can't still be having symptoms from your thyroid because the numbers that they use are very unrealistic whenever it comes to thyroid. So what we find many times is patients do have this subclinical thyroid issue and symptoms of subclinical thyroid problems are like low energy. Now, especially if you wake up tired after adequate sleep or things like mood changes, depression and anxiety, uh, great difficulty losing weight or, or gaining weight, all of this could be thyroid related. And, and, and it can even lead to digestive issues like constipation or bloating and dry skin and, and brittle nails. So what happens is you go to the doctor and he does some blood work because you just don't feel yourself. And he looks at your TSH levels. Now, they consider normal TSH from 0.3 all the way up to 5.6 to be normal thyroid levels. But understand, guys, you can feel terrible at 0.3 or 0.4 or 0.5. But if you fell within that normal huge range that they consider normal, they'll say that it's not your thyroid feel making you feel bad. So what they're saying is if you're 0.30, you're fine and have no issues. But if you're 0.29, now you have a disease. And so that makes no sense whatsoever to me. And I really don't think it makes too much sense to you either because you can feel terrible and be a 0.4. So they look at it and go, well, it's not that. But, but you, it's still affecting you. And so that's called subclinical thyroid. So what we're doing is not good enough for these patients because people are suffering needlessly with all sorts of uh, thyroid problems and fatigue and weight gain and low energy and sleeplessness. Listen, guys, traditional treatment for thyroid problems has not really changed much since 1962. In 1962, they had black and white televisions and most cars didn't have air conditioners. So I think that it's safe to say that it's time that we revisit ways that we can make the thyroid work better and find out what the true underlying reasons in the bodies are to solve some of these complex issues in a real common sense way. So we have some new ideas about thyroid disorders that the public really wants to know about because, you know, this affects 30 million people in America and half of those have either been misdiagnosed or underdiagnosed. And they don't know that why, but they just don't feel themselves. Maybe they're tired all the time or they're sort of brain foggy and, you know, they just don't feel, they just don't feel right. Maybe they even blame it on old age or, or you know, maybe they just blame it on stress or that they didn't sleep well. But the truth is they may actually be having this subclinical thyroid disorder going on in their body. And your thyroid is involved in every metabolic process in your body. It's critical to heart function and digestion and mood and alertness and how sharp you feel in your brain and weight gain and weight loss. And so we don't rule out thyroid in our wellness program until we've checked all of the available thyroid markers and have proven that they're within optimal working limits. Not these huge, ridiculous ranges that they, from 0.3 all the way to 5.6. And, 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 and not only that, but there's actually about 12 things that we look at whenever it comes to seeing how the thyroid function. And so we're going to talk about all of those different parameters that we look at for thyroid on the show today and what it does and what you should know about it. And after this break, I'm going to explain to you 
the way your thyroid actually works and what it does and what you and what you should look for with you know symptoms of your thyroid not working and i'm going to tell you the important numbers that you should actually be looking for whenever it comes to thyroid disorders and if you want to know more about our four secrets to a healthy thyroid workshop just call my office at 837 7174 and leave your name on the machine it's going to be july the 2nd at 6 30 that's 837 7174 and if you have thyroid problems you should definitely come and also if you just feel like you're low energy or have ga- uh, weight gain or brain fog and, and 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 you have either been told your thyroid was good or you haven't had it checked you should come as well i'm even going to show you about a simple home test that you can track how your thyroid is progressing using a thermometer so it's 837 837- 7174. Leave your number on the machine and we'll call you when we get back to work on Monday. You're listening to Get Well Acadiana. I'm Dr. Kevin. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Get Well Acadiana with Dr. Kevin. Thank you for joining me on the show today. The goal of today's show is to try to help some of the 30 million Americans out there suffering from thyroid disorders. And the number one question that I get all the time from patients is, why did my thyroid quit working in the first place? Now, that's the question we should actually be paying attention to, because if we can start to look at why the cells have begun to malfunction, why the assembly line to end up with usable thyroid hormone is malfunctioning, and if we can check each step along that pathway, then we can ask ourselves, is there anything I can do to that part of the assembly line to get it to improve? And so we can really begin to break this down to try to find out some of the underlying reasons why the thyroid is not working. And, you know, this genetic thing, guys, I don't buy that. Uh, You know, well, I have thyroids because my mom had it and her mom had it and her mom had it. Listen, if it were genetic, you would have been born with it. If you got thyroid because mom had thyroid, why did you get it at 20 or, or, or why did you get it at 40? And you didn't at 20 or why did why did it happen when it did something had to change you may have had the genetic propensity to get it but why did it happen at your age and you didn't have it two years before that so there's something environmental had to take place in order for all of a sudden that thyroid to stop working so yes the genetic likelihood could have been there but if it were just pure genetics you would have been born with it So let's go over a few of the reasons we look at to see if we can figure out why the thyroid is malfunctioning. And then truthfully, guys, it's almost always a combination of these. Almost all patients have a series of things going wrong that has caused their thyroid to go bad. And so there are several reasons as far as the why the thyroid may actually be stopped, may have stopped working. And so usually it's a combination of these and heavy metals are one, you know, you have iodine receptors on your thyroid cells that hook onto iodine and bring them inside the cell for use. Sometimes heavy metals can block these receptor sites, making your thyroid uh, uh, start to shut down or, or, or very difficult to function. You know, heavy metals are things like lead, mercury, cadmium, and arsenic. And, and if we get rid of those heavy metals off of these receptor sites, sometimes it can it can really help. And and if you don't think heavy metals are a problem, you, you really need to take a look at this. I've had two patients this year that their mercury was so high that the lab that tested it, uh, that I sent their blood to, was legally obligated to report that level of mercury to the state health department. And the health department sent an investigator in to determine where this high level of mercury was coming from. That's how bad it was. That's how high it was. That, that an investigator had to come in to determine is there a is there a mercury leak or are these people being poisoned and you know what both of them were thyroid pe- uh, patients and 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 they both had no idea that their mercury was you know three times higher than than the toxic levels but these heavy metals have the ability to clog the receptor sites on your thyroid that brings iodine 
into the thyroid cell to be used. So we have to check that. Environmental chemicals are another one. That's another big reason the thyroid stops working, specifically phthalates and BPA. Phthalates and BPA are two chemicals that are proven to cause thyroid malfunction. And, and, and this is researched literature fact. And the average American eats 14 pounds of industrial chemicals, pesticides, and preservatives every year. And these chemicals disrupt the way your thyroid functions. And we have to look and see if they're present and get rid of them and get them out. And if we test and find these chemicals and we detoxify them out of the body, then, you know, these chemicals won't be in the way of that of that normal thyroid function. We check enzymes as well. Guys, I'm going to talk a lot about two enzymes today that are involved in converting the raw materials in your body to usable thyroid hormone. There are two enzymes that are critical in this assembly line of making thyroid enzymes. It's TPO and TBG are the two enzymes that are critical to end up with usable, healthy thyroid. And as a matter of fact, these are the two enzymes that can be attacked by the immune system in autoimmune thyroid disorders. So if the immune system is killing or attacking these two enzymes, we have to figure out why that is and see if we can change that, that area. Now, most people are really low in enzymes anyway. And we have a, a, a supplement that's a massive variety of enzymes that we can give patients that'll, you know, really make the body start to work again. So let me real quickly run down the sequencing of events that your thyroid goes through in order to make usable thyroid hormone. And I think this will make more sense. So your body uses raw materials and one of them is called tyrosine and the other one is iodine. Now, this TPO enzyme joins four of these iodine molecules onto tyrosine to make T4. T4 is a thyroid hormone that's completely unusable by your body. You can have lots of T4 in your body and it doesn't help you whatsoever. Until another enzyme called TBG takes T4 over to your liver and stomach where one of those iodines is removed making T3. And T3 is usable thyroid hormone in your body. So this is like an assembly line. TPO grabs tyrosine and four iodines and puts them together. TBG shuttles it to the liver and stomach to be converted to T3. T3 is the usable form of thyroid hormone for your body. And T3 runs your metabolism by converting the food that you eat into energy. Now, I didn't go through all of that to be confusing, and at my workshop, I'm going to actually draw all of this out for you with graphs and charts, and it'll make perfect sense. But my point I wanted you to see is how intricate the thyroid is and how many steps it actually takes to get usable T3. You have to have the raw materials present, first of all. You have to have iodine, and you have to have tyrosine there. And if you have an iodine deficiency... Uh, you don't have the available iodine to make thyroid. And some studies show that, you know, uh, iodine ha levels have declined 50% over the last 30 years. One third of the world's population now lives in iodine deficient areas. So you have to have iodine there. And to add to this iodine problem, iodine is in a group of molecules called halogens, meaning that they're in the same family as chlorine and fluoride. But iodine is the weakest of these three. That means that chlorine or fluoride can bully iodine out of the way. So when you add up all the chlorine and fluoride that we dump into our water system and that we put inside our body every day, all of these things can bully iodine out of place. All of this has to be looked at if you're not making thyroid hormone. Now, in, uh, in autoimmune Hashimoto's disease, your TPO enzyme has been attacked by your immune system so you don't make thyroid hormone. Or your TBG enzyme is being attacked by your immune system so you don't make thyroid hormone. The lady that I mentioned in the first segment had both, double Hashimoto's. Her immune system was attacking both of those enzymes, the one that makes T4 
and the one that shuttles T4 to the liver and stomach to be converted to T3. And she she never knew that whenever we evaluated, until we evaluated her, that she had all that going on. She was told, your thyroid's out, take Synthroid. And there was actually so much more going on than that. Now, remember, T3 is made in the liver and stomach. So if your liver and stomach is so unhealthy, which we find all the time, by the way, but if your liver and stomach is so unhealthy that it can't make the conversion to usable thyroid hormone, your numbers will look really good on paper, but you're still going to feel terrible. And I see that a lot with patients. You know, their numbers look good, you know, but doc, I don't feel myself. You know, I'm, I, I realize my lab numbers look good, but I still feel terrible. Well, that's what's happening. Their liver and stomach are so unhealthy that they're not able to, to make usable thyroid hormone, even though, uh, you know, on paper, it looks fine. So my point with all this, guys, I didn't want to get too deep in the woods with all of these reasons and all these whys today, it, it, but it's a complex system. And I want you to know that you have to look at every step of this complex system. Our thyroid panel is 12 different markers. I can tell you exactly where along the assembly line the body is breaking down. Is it T4? Is it T3? Is it the enzymes? Is it iodine? I can tell you where along the assembly line the body is breaking down. And if we're ever even going to get in the ballpark of talking about how to improve the body, we got to know where the problem is. So I'm hosting a free community workshop on this where I can go into all of the possible solutions and details. It's going to be July the 2nd at 6.30 p.m. Uh, and if you, want it from, if you want more information on this, you can call my office at 837-7174. We do have limited seating, so you want to call right away. This one's going to fill up really quickly. It's 837-7174. Just leave your name and number on my office machine. And that will guarantee that you get a spot. And I'll give you a call back Monday when we get into the office and, and, and give you more information and give you locations and all that. So it's 837-7174. Stay tuned after this break. We're going to get into some more details. Welcome back to Get Well Acadiana with Dr. Kevin. I hope I didn't get too deep in the weeds with you guys on that last segment about all the different steps that your body goes through to make thyroid hormone. You know, if one little step goes wrong in the assembly line process, you don't make thyroid hormone. And so if you don't know what each step is doing, then you're not even in the ballpark of trying to figure some of these things out. Now, in Hashimoto's disease, what that means is that your body's own immune system has decided to attack and kill those two enzymes that we talked about. Remember, one of them was TPO, which joins tyrosine with four iodines to make T4. And the other enzyme was TBG, which shuttles T4 to the stomach and liver to be converted into T3. And in Hashimoto's disease, your immune system has decided that one or both of those enzymes is not supposed to be there and it's decided to go and kill them. So an autoimmune disease means that the body's own immune system is attacking and killing itself. Your body is literally destroying itself from inside out. It's like termites in your house destroying the inside of your walls from the inside out. And then here's the thing. This is not a thyroid problem. This is an immune system problem. So your thyroid is the victim here. It's like in a crime. You know, if somebody comes and mugs you and takes your money, that's not your fault. That's the criminal's fault. And in Hashimoto's disease, it's not your thyroid's fault. Your thyroid is being attacked. Your thyroid is the victim. So to say that Hashimoto's disease is a thyroid problem is actually not true. It's an immune system problem. Your immune system is where the malfunction lies. And if we're ever going to get in the ballpark of trying to figure out why, we have to at least be looking at the right system in the body. So your body can't make thyroid hormone because the immune system is destroying it. And just to supplement that with Synthroid and say that that's been fixed is not a very good answer. And remember, guys, earlier I said that 50% of the time, 
If you have an autoimmune disease, your body will start to turn and attack something else as well. So you don't just have one autoimmune disease, you actually have two. Once your immune system gets so out of control that it starts killing itself and it starts to attack, say, your thyroid, it's not too far of a leap for it to turn and start to attack something else. Your joints and you end up with rheumatoid arthritis, your nerves and you end up with MS, or your connective tissue in lupus, um, or your colon cells in Crohn's. And so it, 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 50% of the time, by the, if you have one autoimmune disease, your immune system will turn and start to try to attack something else. But once your immune system gets so mad that it just starts killing itself, that's not a road that you want to go down. And so the other thing about this is that there, the, the, the other medical treatment that we see is these immunosuppressant drugs. And yes, this does work for autoimmune disease. It will sort of turn your immune system off. And these are the drugs similar to what they give people for organ transplants to keep their body from rejecting that organ. So if the immune system is attacking the thyroid and you give them drugs to shut down their immune system, that will suppress the immune system. But you need your immune system to fight off colds and flus. And so that's why these patients end up dying from something like pneumonia or from the flu is because they've suppressed their immune system. So it's all about balance. We want your immune system to work, but we don't want it to work too well. But the bottom line of all of these things is that we have to look long term. We have to see what can happen down the road if you just patch these problems up temporarily. And so we always ask ourselves the question, what's going to happen five years from now or 10 years from now? What shape are you going to be in if you continue down the pathway that you're on? You know, are you setting yourself up for a long, healthy future or are we patching up problems temporarily and letting things fester under the surface that really does need to be addressed? So ask yourself, does your health pathway, what does your health pathway look like five or 10 years from now? And people don't ask that. You know, we're too busy. We have stuff to do. We have bills to pay, things to buy. Uh, places to bring the kids. But where is your health going to be 5, 10, 15 years down the road uh, if you continue to just cover up symptoms? And that's what we always want to think about. So the question becomes, how can we, how can we take that fork in the road with your health pathway that you're going to end up with a life full of the ability to do whatever you want and, you know, golfing and gardening and, you know, doing whatever it is that you want to do in your life. My purpose is to show people that pathway, to show people that fork in the road, to get them the tools that they need to end up with a healthy pathway and avoid the pitfalls of ignoring and covering up these health problems. And that's why I wake up every morning and come to work to show people that healthier road for the future. And that's what my workshop is going to be all about on July 2nd at 6.30 p.m. at the Hampton Inn in Broussard. It's called Four Secrets to a Healthy Thyroid. The number to register for that is 837-7174. That's 837-7174. Seating is limited. And this one's going to fill up quickly, so you want to call right away. Just leave your name and number on the machine. And we will give you a call back Monday and book your seat and give you some more information on it. And when we get back from this break, I'm going to talk about a couple of the things that you should know to close up the show that I want you to pay attention to at home and some things you can do to stay healthier. So don't go away. We'll be right back. And that number again is 837-7174. Welcome back to Get Well with Katie Anna with Dr. Kevin. I hope you've enjoyed the show today, but more importantly than that, I hope you've understood how important it is to do everything you can to solve your health problems once and for all. And I hope that I've been able to encourage all of you to do things that are going to allow you to be healthy and functional for years into the future. 
we've touched on a few points today on thyroid and how important that is to the functioning of almost your entire body. People don't understand what thyroid hormone does in the body. Your thyroid is crucial to every bodily function, every one. Did you know that every single cell in your body has a thyroid receptor on it? Every cell. Thyroid hormone is what allows your cells to convert the food that you eat into usable energy. And so it's like your car converts the gasoline into energy. Thyroid hormone allows your cells to convert the food that you eat into usable energy. And that's why thyroid affects so many things in the body in such profound ways. At my workshop, I'm going to go into each step of this process and show you things to look for to figure out where along this assembly line your body is breaking down. And this really is about putting you on a pathway for a healthier future. You know, there's something I talk about all the time called the tale of two paths. And the tale of two paths is that, you know, we may have one lady here that's 65 years old and she's gardening and shopping with her friends and going jogging and playing with the grandkids and living the time of her life. And we may have another lady that's 65 years old and using a walker or in a wheelchair or, or worse, in a nursing facility, barely able to even dress and take care of herself. Now, they're the exact same age, but, one, but at some point in their life, their health took a very different turn. One of them is enjoying her years. The other one is, is, is needing constant attention. Now, that fork in their health pathway did not happen at 65 or 60 or even 55. That fork in their health pathway happened years, if not decades earlier. One of them did something to ensure that they had a long, healthy future. And the other one, unfortunately, did, did not. And so I want to ask you, where is your health pathway headed? Are you headed on that fork of, not, of, of being able to do whatever you want as long into the future as possible? Or are you headed down the other pathway? And by paying attention to your health and making sure that you don't just continue to patch up symptoms just to make your lab work look pretty or just, you know, to take something to replace your thyroid hormone instead of finding out what's wrong with it, you can end up on that healthier pathway. And at my workshop, we're going to go into each step of the process and show you things to look for to figure out where along the assembly line to have usable thyroid, your body is breaking down. So there's an assembly line, just like making a car. So if you have an assembly line to make a car and one person puts the wheel on and one person puts the door on and another person puts the headlights on and every time I have a car come off the factory floor, the door is messed up, I pretty much know who to go to. Because that's the step in the assembly line that's breaking down. And that's how I look at thyroid problems. Look at each step along the way and do all the necessary testing to determine which step is breaking down. Why are the cells doing what they're doing at that particular step in the assembly line? And that's how we evaluate the thyroid using a much more thorough wellness approach. And we're going to show you at the workshop a simple home test using the thermometer where you can monitor your thyroid as it, every, single, uh, every single morning uh, with, a very, with a very simple test at home. So I look forward to seeing all of you at the workshop. It's going to be the best hour you've ever spent to understand why you have brain fog, why you're so tired all the time why you're putting on that 10 pounds every year, no matter what you do, where you're going to understand the, the, you'll have the best understanding of how your thyroid functions and every step along the way of this assembly line. And, you know, you might even discover what's going on right there. The workshop's going to be July the 2nd at 6.30 p.m. at the Hampton Inn in Broussard. And I want you to call and register. You can call right now and leave your name and number on the machine at 837 837- 7174. That's 837 7174. Thank you guys for listening. I'll see you all at the workshop. Have a good weekend.